The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food, Velveeta. Everybody goes for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor in snacks, in sandwiches, and in hot dishes. And Velveeta, you know, helps supply important food values from milk and is as digestible as milk itself. That's why smart homemakers keep Velveeta on hand regularly to spread or slice and to melt for grand economical hot dishes. Tomorrow, get Velveeta. The cheese food of craft quality. Well, it's one of those frosty November nights in Summerfield. A clear white moon, wood smoke in the air. Most folks are home by the fire. And the great Gildersleeve? Well, he's heading in that direction... In fact, he's walking up his front steps right now with that pretty nurse, Katie Milford. Bye, George, Catherine. Tonight we'll have the parlor all to ourselves. Just you and I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Throck Morton. We'll have a nice, quiet evening together. Nobody home but Bertie. Leroy's spending the evening at Piggy's house, and Marjorie has a date with Bronco. Oh. Won't you come into my parlor, said the water commissioner to the nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. This is more like it. Nobody around. I'll build a fire. We'll get some music on the radio. Have the place all to ourselves. I really can't stay very long. Now, Catherine, just look at that fire in the fireplace. Isn't that... Hey, who started that fire? Oh, hello, Uncle Morris. Oop. Marjorie, I thought you had a date with Bronco. Well, I have. He's here. What? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, parlor grabber. <laughs> Uh, hello, Bronco. <laughs> oh, won't you come in and sit down, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, thank you, Bronco. Thank you very much. <laughs> come on in, Catherine. Oh, hello, Miss Milford. Hello, Marjorie. Bronco. Good evening, Miss Milford. Uh, can I offer you my place here on the couch by the fire? No, thanks, Bronco. Uh, can I offer you my place, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, no, Bronco. Relax. Catherine and I will sit... Where will we sit? <laughs> well, Catherine, you take the overstuffed chair and I'll sit on the piano stool... <laughs> My, that's a lovely fire Isn't it? Bronco lighted it Yeah, I brought in the wood <laughs> Marjorie, I thought you and Bronco were going to the movies this evening Well, we decided to stay home Oh? Uh? That's fine You know, we really never had a chance to talk They say conversation is getting to be a lost art Yeah, they do uh, how's everything down at the water department, Mr. Gildersleeve? Hmm? Oh, getting along. Uh, how's everything at college? Oh, good. Uh, very good. Uh, how are things at the hospital, Miss Milford? Oh, fine. What a conversation. <laughs> uh, I guess I misunderstood you today, Marjorie. What? I thought I definitely heard you say that you and Bronco were going to a movie. Well, we thought about it. Well, why don't you go? Don't feel that you have to stay home just on account of us. It's not too late for the second show. Three big features. Anki, we're not going tonight. Why not? Well... It's like this, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm broke. <laughs> oh, well, that's no problem, Bronco. Here, the show will be on me. And so does afterwards. Oh, no, Mr. Gildersleeve. If I can't take Marjorie out on my own money, we'll stay here. <laughs> <laughs> job at school in the afternoons, but they don't pay him enough. Golly, no. I only get four dollars a week for dusting the books in the library. <laughs> Book duster, huh? 
Unky, don't you know somebody who can give Bronco a better job after school? Well... Do you, Mr. Gildersleeve? I've got ambition. I've got drive. I want something I can get my teeth into. Uh, look out, you're pushing me off the piano stool. <laughs> I don't think there's much future in dusting books, and I want something with a future. Oh? A fellow's got to start thinking about things like that. Uh, let me get off this piano stool. Am I right, Mr. Gildersleeve? Am I right? I can't back up any farther. I'm at a very critical point. So am I. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve Oh, I'm very sorry Oh, that's all right Piano needs tuning anyway <laughs> Unky, you're the water commissioner Maybe you could get Bronco a job with the city That's a wonderful idea, why not? The city? Now, wait a minute Throckmorton, a man in your position All you'd have to do is say the word Oh, well, I do have a certain amount of influence <laughs> Well, you have a lot of influence, Unky you can walk into the mayor's office any time you want. Yeah, that's true. You'll do it, won't you? Well... Oh, Bronco, Unky's going to get you a job. Uh, oh, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. You see how easy it is, Bronco, when you know the right people? <laughs> you have a job, my boy. <laughs> Drop in at the water department tomorrow afternoon and ask for me. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Gilsey. Uh, good morning, Bertie. Here's your prunes. Well, thank you. One, two, three, four. Leroy, stop counting my prunes. <laughs> you only got four. How come I have to eat seven? I've been framed. <laughs> well, prunes are good for you, Leroy. Good morning, Leroy. Hi. Good morning, Uncle Mort, you darling you. Bye. You're the best, Uncle. <laughs> That'll get you nowhere, Marge. You still got to eat seven prunes. Yep. <laughs> Bertie, do you know what Uncle Mort's doing for me? What's that, Miss Marjorie? He's going to get Bronco a job. Oh, that's nice. Nice? It's super. It's really just too, too excruciating. <laughs> All right, Leroy, you've still got one, two, three, four, five prunes to go. Yeah, I know. And get closer to the pits. <laughs> what kind of a job you gonna get him, Miss Gilsley? Well, I'm gonna see what's open down at the city hall, Bertie Depends a little on what Bronco's qualified for Well, he's on the scrub team You might get him a job scrubbing streets <laughs> Leroy I'm eating them Yeah <laughs> All Bronco needs is an opportunity well, He's so ambitious Oh? Someday, I'm sure he'll be as important a man as you, Uncle Mort. Well, now, Marjorie, let's not expect too much of the boy. <laughs> if anybody can put him on top, Mr. Gilsey, you can do it. Well, I'll try, Bertie. Ain't everybody can walk up and say, Mr. Mayor, give that boy a job. Now, Bertie. But you can do it. All you got to say is, Mr. Mayor, give that boy a job. Well. <laughs> Miss Marjorie, you know all your uncle's got to say? That I do, Bertie. That's right. Mr. Mayor, give that boy a job. <laughs> Well, I guess my voice does carry some weight Leroy, eat those prunes Yes, sir, Commissioner Uh, good morning, Bessie any calls this morning, Bessie? Yes, sir. I've had three and you've had one. <laughs> three to one, eight. Who called? Well, Homer at the malt shop and Perry. He's that darling salesman at Hogan Brothers. Bessie, who else called? My mother. <laughs> I mean, who called me? Oh, the mayor. What did he want? You. Uh, I assume that, Bessie Well, he said he'd drop in and see you this morning about the new fire hydrant He did, eh? Well, I'll have something I want to talk to him about, too We're going to be having a new employee in the city hall, Bessie You mean I'm fired? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, Bessie, I'm going to arrange a job for a young college boy A football player Really, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah oh, If there's anyone who needs help, I think it's a football player yeah. Is he cute? Well, I wouldn't call Bronco cute I think he's been stepped on by a few cleats. <laughs> but the way I look at it, Bessie, 
There's no use in a man holding down an important position if he can't use it to help others. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're an idealist. Well, maybe I am. I'll be in my office, Bessie. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, now, let's see. What is Bronco qualified to do? Hmm. Maybe I'd better take another approach. <laughs> now, if I were the mayor, where would I put him? Say, that's an interesting thought. Mayor Gildersleeve. Yeah, sounds pretty good. <laughs> Wonder how it looks in print. His Honor, Mayor... Rock Morton, he, Gildersleeve. Not bad. Hi, <laughs> George, if I were mayor, I could give him a job without asking anybody. I could give all my friends jobs. Good morning, Bessie. Good morning, Judge Hooker. Yeah, there's the judge. I could make him city attorney. Ah, and how's the big water wheel this morning? <laughs> Come in, Horace. What are you doing, Gildy? Printing a sign? Now, don't get nosy. Let me see that. Yep. Well, his honor, Mayor Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. <laughs> All right, Horace, stop cackling or I won't make you city attorney. What? Well, I was just thinking where I'd place some of my old friends if I were mayor. Oh, and if you were mayor, Gildy, what would become of Mayor Terwilliger? Well, I'd be big about it. I'd give him my job as water commissioner. <laughs> Let's see how that would look. Mayor, I mean, Herman Terwilliger... Water, Commissioner. <laughs> Come to think of it, Gilda, that'd be a very funny twist. I think so, too. <laughs> well, good morning, gentlemen. Mayor Swilliger. Well, good morning, Mr. Mayor. Why all the levity? Do we have a comic in the water department? Oh, no. I mean, uh, I better slip this under the phone book. Whoop. Oh, you you dropped something, Gilda Sleeve. I'll get it. Oh, no, I'll get it. I'll get it. I got it. He did get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here you are. Oh, wait a minute. Is this a memorandum intended for me? Oh, no, Mr. Mayor. That's it has my name on it. It says Herman Terwilliger, Water Commissioner. Water Commissioner? <laughs> no, Mr. Mayor. And Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve Mayor. <laughs> oh, Gildersleeve, what's the meaning of this? Doesn't mean a thing, Your Honor. I'm just sitting here doodling, and I guess I got our doodles, our titles mixed. <laughs> I, I was waiting for you to come in. I had a little favor I wanted to ask. Gildersleeve, it'll be a cold day in August when you get a favor out of me. A mighty cold day. <laughs> well... That was quick. From water commissioner to mayor and back again in a minute and a half. <laughs> Rub it in, you old goat. Uh, and Bronco's probably on his way down here. Oh, Bronco? What's he going to do? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> We'll see how the great Gildersleeve handles this situation in just a minute. Say, Mom, if you want the folks to do a real double take on the vegetables at dinner, listen to this. The family will ask for seconds when you serve those vegetables in a rich cheese sauce you make the easy way with Kraft Smooth Melting Cheese Food, Velveeta. Yes, Velveeta's grand, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor adds wonderful goodness to such vegetables as cabbage, cauliflower, green beans, spinach, and so on. Swell-eating Velveeta sauce gives those vegetables extra nourishment, too. You know, Velveeta helps supply important food values from milk. And here's all you do to make this grand cheese sauce. Just melt one half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double broiler. Then gradually stir in one quarter cup of milk. Season to taste, and there it is. A vegetable glorifier that'll have the whole family calling for more. You know, Velveeta sauce is a leftover glorifier, too. Perfect for turning leftover chicken or ham into a hearty main dish. So when you shop, get Kraft Smooth Melting Cheese Food Velveeta in the economical two-pound loaf. So there'll be plenty on hand for snacks and sandwiches and grand cheese sauce dishes, too. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta. It's the cheese food of top quality, made only by Kraft. Well, the great Gildersleeve got out on a limb, and the mayor sawed it off. Last night, the water commissioner promised to get Marjorie's boyfriend a part-time job with the city. Nothing to it. But it didn't work out that way. Uh, what'll I tell Bronco? 
Mr. Gildersleeve? Huh? What is it, Bessie? Well, when are you going to talk to the mayor about that college boy? Well, I can't talk to the mayor about anything today. Well, what are you going to tell the boy when he comes in? I'll just have to tell him the truth, Bessie. I can't get him a job. Yeah, I've let the boy down. Mr. Gildersleeve, why don't you give him a part-time job here in the water department? Well, he'd still have to be approved by the mayor, Bessie. I can't pay him out of my own pocket. Well, couldn't you pay him out of petty cash? No, Bessie. <laughs> petty cash. Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm here. Oh, there he is now. In here, Bronco. Here I am, Mr. Gildersleeve, ready to go to work. Well, what department do I report to? Yeah, Bronco, put your coat back on. Hey, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, wow, those shoulders. Hey, Bessie. <laughs> Sit down, Bronco. I want to have a talk with you. I can't sit down, Mr. Gildersleeve. I've got to tackle this new job. I'm full of ginger. Yeah. Ginger. And Bessie will excuse you for a moment. Yes, sir. Bye. Hmm? Oh, you talking to me? Bye. Yes, yes. Bessie, this is Bronco Thompson. Bronco, this is my secretary, Bessie. How do you do? Hiya, Bessie. Well, bye. Goodbye, Bessie. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now then, Bronco, about this job Oh, the job Gee, Mr. Gildersleeve, I couldn't sleep all last night thinking about it Yes, well, uh... You know, when I walked up the city hall steps and down these marble corridors I got a big thrill Right here You did? I said to myself, Bronco Thompson, I salute you on the threshold of a great career Yeah, well, you see, Bronco... I... Who knows how fast and how far I may rise Why... Someday I may even be mayor. Shh, I wouldn't mention that around here. <laughs> Whatever you say, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm ready to go to work from the bottom up. Bronco, please put your coat back on. I have a few things I want to say to you. Yes, sir. But first, I want you to know I called my mother last night. Your mother? Yes, sir. Mr. Gildersleeve, I told her I had a big man sponsoring me. And I told her what a swell thing you're doing for me. Well, Bronco, I did have a little talk with the mayor, but uh, at the present time, I mean, well... Uh... Mr. Gildersleeve, you do have a job for me, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I knew that, Mr. Gildersleeve. Where do I report? Report? Well, I suppose you could report right here in the water department. Oh, that's great. I'm at your service every afternoon from 3 until 5.30. What'll I do first? Well, first, put your coat back on. <laughs> yes, sir. But I want action, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm raring to do things. Uh, yeah, I can see that, Bronco. But for the time being, you'd better just sit around the office and absorb things. Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't want to be a parasite. Well, you're an employed parasite. <laughs> you what? I, I mean, a working man is not a parasite. And you're a working man. <laughs> Bessie? Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve? Find a nice, strong chair for Bronco to sit in. I'm going down to Peavy's and get some black coffee. Two cups. <laughs> uh, hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> What can I do for you this afternoon? Well, you can give me a cup of coffee, Peavy, and make it strong. Having trouble staying awake, are you? <laughs> no, Peavy, it's nerves. Got a college boy in the office. Believe me, he's a problem. Well, that must be the young fellow who was in here a while ago. He said he was on his way down to see you. Yeah, Bronco. He ordered a double malted milk, and he drank it between here and the door. Yeah, <laughs> That was Bronco. He's Marjorie's boyfriend. He said he had to have quick energy to tackle his new job. <laughs> that boy doesn't need energy. He needs a sedative. <laughs> trying to get him through college, are you, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, PBM. Trying to get him out of the parlor. I mean... Uh... <laughs> I promised Marjorie I'd get him a job. Well, that's commendable. He doesn't really need the job, PV. Just wants money to entertain Marjorie. Now I've got him on my neck. As one might say, you're saddled with Bronco. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, little witticism there. Saddled, Bronco. Yes. <laughs> the worst part of it is, Peavy, it isn't costing the city a cent. I'll have to pay him out of my own pocket. My, my. He won't be able to afford it very long, but he's loaded with ambition. I don't want to break his spirit. Well, that's right. Uh, what do you have him doing? He's sitting up there in a chair. <laughs> Rather difficult to imagine a Bronco just sitting. Yeah. By George Peavy, I think you've got something. How's that? If there's nothing to do, he'll probably get fed up and leave of his own accord. Well, he might at that. Peavy, that's exactly what'll happen. In fact, I doubt if he's there when I get back. But I've done my part. 
I told him I could get him a job, and I did. If it doesn't suit him, he can go find one of his own. That sounds fair enough. You bet. Besides, nobody wants to sit around the water department drawing pay and doing nothing. Well, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) Phoebe! He's gone. Looks like some of the furniture is gone, too. Oh, everything's just changed around. Hmm, looks pretty good. Is there something I can do for you, sir? Oh, it's you, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Bronco, I thought you... Are you still here? Oh, yes, sir. Why wouldn't I be? Well, I thought perhaps you'd get tired just sitting around with nothing to do. And... Oh, I couldn't stand that, so I took the initiative and put myself to work. Uh, look what I'm doing to your office, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, my office? I put the filing cabinet over here. And now you won't have to take the bottle off the water cooler every time you want to file something under the A's. Oh? Then I took all those old reports off your desk so you could see over it. Oh? I put them in a neat pile and put them in the closet. And then I put the old magazines away and put the wastebasket under the desk. Oh. Uh, by the way, where'd you put Bessie? <laughs> oh, I sent her down to get a malt. Uh, you did? <laughs> That girl needs energy, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, well... Uh, Bessie wanted me to go with her, but I couldn't take the time. I'm too interested in this new job. Oh, yes. About this job... You see all these unpaid water bills I found on your desk? Uh, Forget those old bills, Bronco. We charged those off in 1946. Nobody could collect them. Well, if you have no objections, I'd like to try. But... It's pretty hard to say no to me, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're doggone right it is. (laughs) have to go talk to the mayor. I can't tell that boy he isn't really working for the city. I can't keep paying him myself either. Gildersleeve, you're on the horns of a dilemma. I just nonchalantly walk into the mayor's office and tell him to put Bronco on the payroll. Sure. Uh, wait a minute, Gildersleeve. Don't be a fool. Go home. <laughs> nope. Can't do that either. Marjorie's counting on me to get Bronco a job. I told Catherine there was nothing to it. Well, maybe there isn't anything to it. Mayor's a pretty understanding fellow. Well, yes, he is. Sure. Go on in there, Gildersleeve. Probably forgotten all about this morning. Yes, my dear. Yes. I I forgot. I I know I did. The mayor must have his wife on the phone. Well, I couldn't help it. Poor fellow. That Gildersleeve made me so mad this morning, I've been boiling all day. <laughs> Is somebody out there to see me? Uh, no, the wrong office, looking for the marriage license bureau. <laughs> yeah. Go home, Gildersleeve. This is one of your bad days. <laughs> Tell me all about it. About what, Marjorie? Well, you said after dinner you'd tell me all about Bronco's new job. Well, there isn't much to tell, my dear. He, um... um... Well, what's Bronco's salary, Unky? Well, not much. Uncle Mort, aren't you going to tell me anything? Well, there's still a few details to be ironed out. All right. (laughs) Just have to wait for Bronco to tell me when he comes over. Is Bronco coming over? Well, I'll bet that's Bronco now. Yeah, bet it is. Well, this has gone far enough. Just have to tell him once and for all he doesn't have a job. Hello, Marjorie. Oh, Miss Milford, come in. Well, Catherine. Hello, Throckmorton. I just had to come over and see how Bronco came out today. Unky got him a job in the water department. Isn't it exciting? Oh, that's wonderful, Throckmorton. Marjorie, I think we should give your uncle a kiss. Let's. <laughs> 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 Somebody's at the door, Unky. Door? Somebody? Who? Oh, the door. Oh, the door. I'll get it. Yeah. Hello, boss. Boss? Oh, yes. Come in, Bronco. Ah, Thanks. Hiya, Marge. Hello, Bronco. Congratulations, Bronco. I hear Mr. Gildersleeve got you a job. Yeah, wasn't that swell of him? Put her there, boss. Thanks a million, (laughs) Mr. Gildersleeve. Now, Bronco, not so fast. I've got something to tell you. I know what it is. You forgot a little something today, didn't you? I did? You forgot to tell the mayor you hired me. Oh. After you left, the mayor came in. Zeke. He saw what I'd done today, and he was tickled pink. He was? I collected all those old water bills. No. Sure. 
You weren't there, so I gave the money to the mayor. Oh, my goodness. But he said hiring me was a fine idea. He thinks you're great. He does? Uh, I mean, of course he does. <laughs> Isn't Uncle marvelous? Throckmorton, you're a born executive. No. <laughs> we sure made a hit with the mayor, Mr. Gildersleeve. But why didn't you tell him you hired me? Well, I don't think uh, I ought to tell the mayor everything. <laughs> oh, come on, Marge. I want to tell you all about it. Oh, I'm just dying to hear it. Uh, that was close. <laughs> well, I guess I'd better go. No, wait a minute, Catherine. I can't let you run off so soon. We never did get to sit by the fire last night. That's right, we didn't. Yeah. Let's go into the parlor. See, he had the water <laughs> Kids have the parlor again. Well, I'll take care of that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> oh, come in, Uncle Morris. Uh, children, since we've improved Bronco's financial situation, I suppose you'll be going to that movie you wanted to see last night. Oh, no, Mr. Gildersleeve. Now that I've got a good job, I'm saving my money. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. If the folks at your house don't go to bed till they've raided the icebox, I just hope that icebox holds a two-pound loaf of Kraft's famous cheese food, Velveeta. Mmm, mmm, because golden Velveeta is so good eating with its grand, rich-tasting, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And you know you can enjoy Velveeta snacks anytime because Velveeta is as digestible as milk itself and really nutritious. For instance, it's helped supply fine protein for strong muscles, minerals that help build sound teeth and bones, vitamins needed for normal growth. You see, Velveeta helps supply many important food values from milk. So whether you spread that Velveeta on crackers or cut hearty slices for sandwiches, you can be sure Velveeta snacks are good for you and so good to eat. Get genuine Velveeta tomorrow. It's the cheese food of Kraft quality. Just in time. The newsreel is just finishing. Oh, yeah, the newsreel. A couple of good pictures on tonight, too. Two, sir. Uh, yes, miss. Two together in the middle. Right this way. Here you are. Good. After you, Catherine. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> oh ball head. <laughs> Pardon me. Excuse me, madam. <clears throat> Big feet. <sighs> uh, there we are. <sighs> Good seat. Yeah. Uh, at last. May I hold your hand, Catherine? I don't mind at all. Uh, that's one thing about a movie theater. Maybe a thousand people, but you can still be alone. Hi, Hunk. Leroy. <laughs> Where are you? Right behind you. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. And me too. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Ladies, Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food, is offering you a knife of a hundred uses, the Super Slicer. It pairs faster, slices cleaner, removes olives and cherries from bottles in a jiffy. It's the handiest kitchen knife in years. And you can get this knife for only 25 cents and the top label of a round package of delicious Pabstet cheese food or the red arrow from the top of a two-pound Pabstet loaf. Send your Pabstet label and your quarter tonight to Phoenix Pabstet, Box 5239, Chicago, 77, Illinois. 
please print your return address. Break the Bank, radio's biggest money-paying show, is next on NBC. NBC.